happening. It's not happening in Atlanta. It's not ha DC has been dead. It's not in New York. New York, they got a problem with space now. They can barely get space. Even, you know, automatics in them is bouncing around from place to place. So uh, uh, that's real confined. Um, Philadelphia is nothing happening. I mean, I go through Philly, but I go usually when I go to Philly, I do a house lecture. You see what I'm saying? But it, it was it, it was smoking for a while. They bring all the food and potluck and mm. liquor and everything. You know, we do it all. And basically, we, we do the lecture and all. We have a, you know, packed house and all. But my point is that the, 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 the major places where you would go, that's all gone. Atlanta, if I don't speak in Atlanta, we really don't have nothing. You see, and I haven't spoken in Atlanta since June, but I've been on the road. But my point is, is for the lineup you got, this is the actual hub. But then again, if you understand anything spiritual, it's always the smaller group of people in the upper room, which is the key. You see what I'm saying? It's always isolated. If you see any of the Star Wars trilogy, you see anything, when they break the doggone rebellion in any classical mythology, the evil empire always think they got them licked, but it's always a little few little priesthoods meeting somewhere. It's just like they when they broke the first rebellion, which is now coming out next year, this year, which was part one, two, and three is coming out this year because you started with what? Uh, uh, four, five, and six of the Star Wars. So when they broke it, they, uh, Yoda went to a little small planet somewhere, someplace else. You see, so my point is, whenever they think they got it licked, it always go and it's always smaller, but anytime you know anything about smaller, it's always more thorough. You see what I'm saying? Now, naturally this is a spiritual place, because on the other hand, we don't even deal with the particular slavery that happened in the north. See, people don't realize, people say, you know, the, the south tells you that they got all this damn slavery down south, and the north never had slavery. Some people think the north never had slavery. New York had slavery, it's just that they ended their slavery about 60-something years most of the northern states ended their um, slavery about 60-something years before the South did. But as we heard, like, like, like Brother Jay was even giving me the greater insights on this today, that this was one of the last places to end slavery, period, even after the South, was New Jersey. We love, Bobby. We love. Now, the reason why I know that, I, I, I know that this happened, happened because it came to me when I went to Asbury Park and we went to the Atlantic Ocean, you know, because it's on the ocean, and I felt a spirit... At the ocean, I grew up on the beach, near Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. I grew up there, but I saw, felt this spirit, and it was a slave energy right there on the beach at Asbury Park. And I said, wait a minute, there's something going on here, you see. But then again, on the other hand, I didn't realize that in actuality that the whole slavery thing went on after they emancipated the South. New Jersey still had slavery, I'm hearing, right? And it was one of the last places that actually have slavery. If it's not the last, it's one of the last in the country. So this is after Juneteenth in Texas. This shit is still what's going on. So then again, I understand that the connection with, with uh, and, and the connection with Jersey, which I, I did New York and all that years ago, but the Jersey thing is new to me. Like I, I did, I started. I, I first went to um, Newark in '96, and then Asbury Park, and now the Trenton thing, and now this is the hub now. But that's supposed to happen. It's always got to be. A suburb outside of the city where the energy goes. So this is a suburb of what? Philadelphia, basically. But Philadelphia, so they have basically isolated the energy, and this is the actual spot now. And because it's so minute and small, they can't penetrate it. They can't penetrate it. Which means these brothers don't have anything to worry about, about the government coming. They're already divinely protected because their heart is in the right place. And that's what makes you divinely protected if your heart is in the right place. The only people get fucked up out here is people in the backsliding, but the book of Revelations tell you that. Then the last days is going to be especially hard for them lukewarm niggas. And that's basically warning signs based on what time it is, is you cannot fake the funk. And, and, and a, lot of times, a lot of times it doesn't mean how much work you do in the community or how much you appear to be conscious. It's talking about your heart. And, and the only person can tell that is you and your higher self, which is God. You see what I'm saying? And, and, and it, it's your heart. Your heart has to be in it. And it doesn't necessarily mean based on who got the longest dreadlocks or who wear the most African clothes and all that kind of stuff, because that's cloaking. Now it's going to come from the most unconventional type of people, because now we got to get out of this whole thing based on the way a person appears to monitor that person based on whether his appearance is the wrong way, because we know that there's charlatans in this fucking Afrocentric thing to the point where it's gotten to the point that you don't even like them niggas no more. You see what I'm saying? 
because it's not about the outward appearance in the first place. So it's all based on the heart anyway. So believe me when I tell you this, that look, the people that they were talking about in the last days is supposed to save the world and the damn universe is not some damn people someplace in some damn pretty white gate someplace. Or it's not some other people in these organizations looking for. It's you all right in this room. It's a few people, mainly on the East Coast and in scattered throughout the country in, in pairs, all the way to the West Coast, but mainly it's a few people, that remnant of people that they were talking about in the last days. So how do you say, how do I know this? How do I know this is true? I mean, he's saying that, but how do I know this is true? Because as you know, if you monitor everybody else for the mere fact that you are even sitting up in here on a damn Friday night with some interest in somebody saying anything to you, means in actuality that your spirit is already advanced, otherwise you wouldn't be able to come here. You wouldn't be able to come here. I've seen people come in lectures, they come for the wrong reason, they come up in there and they'll rock back and forth a little while and they'll get up and leave. Because it's not for them for the miss. So you're saying, well, how do I know that I am the spiritual one? Well, first of all, we take the test. How many of you people knew that you were special ever since you was a child? Raise your hand. And every time we know that most people do. So the other point is, and is, is the other point is, is that you know this particular part based on, again, if you are not at that level, your mind could not even conceive it. You see what I'm saying? So this is one thing. So what we want to do is, first of all, we want to, and I'm, I, and I'm sorry I didn't do this. This is one of the things. I'm going to do it tomorrow. We got to get back Kinko's because we got to do this with this brother. First of all, we want to dedicate this lecture. <laughs> The next two nights, we're going to dedicate this lecture to this brother right here. Because I've been doing a series of dedications. And the, 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 the magazine is off the stand, but then again, we got Xerox in now, so you don't necessarily need it. Um, some of you remember this story, but a lot of people don't understand the outcome. This is a story of a brother by the name of Terrence Johnson, I think his name is. Uh, Terrence Johnson. Hmm? Now, where's Prince George County? Prince George County, you know, county outside of Maryland. So outside of Maryland, right. Anyway, this brother, Washington, yeah, this brother, when he was 15 years old, the police somehow got him in the place. He didn't do anything wrong, but they just somehow got him in the jailhouse anyway. You know how they do. And they was beating his ass, and they was going to kill him, but he ended up getting the gun out of the police holster and shot both of these cops when he was 15. Anyway, the brother went to jail, and he had got 25 years or anything, and he stayed. 15 to 25 years. So this brother got out of jail from 15 to, I think he was 34. And he got out of jail and he basically, in the, in the article, he, he went to, he graduated Morgan State, uh, you know, which is the black college in Baltimore. He also went to law school. But when he got out, he realized, I think he realized that there was no different than being out here and in there. And it's really a sad story, and I want you to, and, and, and so we're going to get some copies of this, because we want you to get this story in your hands, because it's not just a sad story, just to say, it's just, it's just show you how slavery, the severe slavery is in this country, and it's not necessarily talking about servitude slavery, it's stories like this that make us enslaved. So this particular brother killed himself last year, and I believe he killed himself because he got out of this bullshit. You see, you know, in hell, you're going to lock me up in a motherfucking place for 15 years. So I thought about this, and what happened was it was spiritual. I was on my, I was flying back from New York. I did a, a lecture in New York, week before last, flying back from New York in the airport, and something said, go in the, in the place and buy a magazine. And I bought this magazine, a fashion magazine, this black uh, fashion magazine from a girl. She looked at it, she said, this shit is done piss poor. Said, go back and get a better one. And we went back in there, and, and I didn't know the whole time that this brother's spirit was actually leading me Towards, and I said, well, I get a GQ magazine. I said, whatever, you know, uh, I, I get a GQ magazine. So, because I had my man Hugh Grant on the cover, I said, well, you know, um, he's the guy that got caught with the hooker, but he was a, a big actor from, the, from England. I said, well, I'll read his story, whatever. You know, and, had a, and, and then I saw this picture. I said, well, I've been wanting to read this picture because I grazed at it. And his spirit actually called me. So we read the picture on the way, read the story on the, on the way back. And it actually gripped me. I, I zeroed out these copies and gave them out the last two weeks. But my point is, this brother took himself out after a while because of the simple fact that, can you imagine being locked up when you're 15? Can, I can't even remember when I was 15. I can remember when I was 15, but my mindset is different than it is now, even if I wasn't even in the consciousness. 
So can you imagine getting out of a world from 15, getting out of a world at 35? It's almost like getting out of, it's almost like being born in the world for the first time. Because at 15, you really, you know, you're just trying to figure shit out. So out here, you know, understand what I'm saying? It was almost like a whole new alien world for the simple fact that since 1978, the actual world has changed. See, if it's 1988, 1990, it ain't too much to different. You see, even fashion was almost damn near the same. You see, but 1978 to 1995 or something like that, that's a drastic difference. You see what I'm saying? So the brother literally took himself out, and I was glad that he killed himself. See, you don't get into that, because everything, you, see, because we are on the survival thing. Everything is based on living, and it costs no. Living ain't shit. That's that old Christian mentality. Oh, I'm just glad I woke up this morning. Well, a goddamn dog just woke up this morning. <laughs> How do you know that's God? He woke you up this morning. Hell, a fucking rat woke up this morning. That don't mean shit. But at what level? What capacity? You see what I'm saying? So based on capacity, you understand what I'm saying? The right thing to do was to take yourself out for the simple fact that this ain't shit. And for the mere fact that he did that is letting you know that it's a doggone gesture, that this shit is over. He's only going where we going anyway. You understand what I'm saying? You got to start thinking that particular mentality and stop valuing life as so precious. Fuck the dumb shit. You understand what I'm saying? You're grasping for straws, Russian roulette, spin the fucking bottle. You understand what I'm saying? This is nothing. This is over with. And for the mere fact that life is tedious and repetitious, and you got to build up new, new ways to even enjoy yourself, or new drugs to take yourself out of this, it means that the earth plane is gone. In the story, you understand what I'm saying? And you should be looking at that every day. Every day you wake up, you go, well, it's another damn day I got to invent something new. You understand? To drug myself out about this poisonous bullshit down here. You see what I'm saying? And it's even like that in the scriptures, in the Gospel of Thomas, the one that they took out of the Bible, say, the, if, if, if for those people seeking, may you find. And when you find, you should be distraught and disturbed when you find knowledge based on the world around you. But if you are disturbed, start rejoicing because the kingdom is at hand. You see what I'm saying? But it's saying that all this, when your eyes are open, you see the bullshit for what it is. And you shouldn't enjoy this particular stuff and say everything going to be all right. These drug things. You see what I'm saying? And it's a beautiful day. What makes it a damn beautiful day? You understand what I'm saying? When your people can't even enjoy shit. At what level is this a beautiful day? At a drug thing? Because I got a new damn dress. Because another white motherfucker in the world ended up liking me. You see what I'm saying? Another thing you got to stop doing. And not you, but then again, on the other hand, we're talking about the few that's left. Don't get around white people and talk no goddamn small talk. If a white person come up to you talking that small talk, either you get out of the conversation or you tell them, look straight up. I don't want to hear that small talk shit because you think... That you talk, they patronizing you and they always come down because they don't think you know shit. Right. So they always gonna talk to you about some small talk shit. Yeah. How about them Atlanta Braves? How about them goddamn Yankees? Fuck that shit. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? But he talked down on you that particular way. So it's another thing, like, like I said, this white boy came up, you know. I don't know if I was here the last time I told you about that. Uh, you know, um, um, my girl, she works at the Atlanta Journal and uh, writes, she's writing obituary. She works at the paper. And all, she get all in sky side scoop and all any type of news. They don't put that shit in the paper. Anyway, this white boy worked with her. He, we, we, uh, she was off that day. She went to pick up a check. He, and we was getting ready to go. To, I said, well, there's a new vegetarian restaurant down the street. He said, you want to go check it out? The white boy was like, yeah, I want to go too. So we was like, cool. He's supposed to be this, you know, white boy, sunflower kid from Berkeley. You know, they go to school naked. Go sit up in the class naked. They don't eat no damn meat. And they don't eat, they, they don't wear no leather shoes. You know, all that old let live shit and everybody, everybody, and it's beautiful shit. So I go down to, so for the mere fact that she's telling me he in all this radical liberalism, I say, well, come on, we go, I'm going to, you know, so we go down to the thing and we start talking. He's all just talking small talk about the job. Yeah, you know, and so on and so on. I'm like, wait a minute. So sooner or later, I got on all this stuff. I knew he going to get into a conversation. Okay. Yeah, but I heard the Egyptians was um, doing brain surgery, you know, years ago. And I said, okay, now that's a damn entry. Because I'm sooner or later, I was going to put it on his ass anyway. <laughs> you ain't going to sit up here and talk to me about no bullshit. But since he, before I, I was getting ready to bust in, but since he did it anyway, I said, okay, boom. He came in and we started talking. And all right. And I said, I'm, I'm going to lead to some stuff because I know he's going to try to challenge me because he... First of all, they always think that you're ignorant. I don't care how much education you got. 
So I was saying, you know, the, and so I said, you know, the Western man, I said, the Western man, the problem with the Western man is, is he thinks that primitive means stupid, and primitive just means primal. Mm -hmm. And I said, the only reason why he thinks it's stupid because he's the one that's actually stupid. Mm -hmm. I kept saying the Western man, you know, that's the same thing as saying the white man. <laughs> and so he said, well, explain. I said, well, you know, um, the primitive, you go, and go, you go in and, and go cut open a heart and, and hit or miss, you might save a few patients with heart transplant and all this old bloody shit, and, and really you just basically just patching people up. I said, well, the ancient man would come back, and he would know, understand that he would get an egg, he'd get a coconut, he would get some sunflower, he would get some this and that, and he'd do the same thing with the heart. And he said, I got your ass now, Kirk, nigga, because you're going to have to explain that shit to me, you know, Mr. Intellectual. I set his ass right up. He said, I got you now, and you know what? I've been doing the ritual. I've been actually doing the rituals. I've been doing some ritual stuff. For a while, but I didn't understand how the process went for the simple fact that the actual science behind it was lost thousands of years ago. But he said, I got you now. You're going to have to explain this thing to me, how that works based on the heart surgery. I said, well, it's like this. Everything has an electromagnetic force field, doesn't it? He said, yes, it does. And I said, so if an electromagnetic force field goes with everything, then we understand that everything physical is connected with electromagnetic force field also. He said, yes. I said, as well as everything is the organs of the body is all.